Hi, this is Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy, with another little lesson for you guys tonight. Tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about what I call the elements of design, all right? Now, I was very fortunate that in my tool making career, um, I was originally trained in high school as a draftsman, all right? And there was something about it, and you've seen maybe my drawing, um, drafting videos on YouTube. They're kind of popular, but it's painstakingly slow, all right? But there was something about being trained properly in that area of the trade that when you're putting your paper and pen and your mind to the, on this, things you have to think a little bit more, all right? Now, before you say, you know, here comes the old guy, the anti-science, anti-progress guy. I use AutoCAD every day. I run a CNC machine every day. I love technology. But Houston, we have a problem because as somebody that is the um, recipient of some very poor drawings, let's call them that. They're very pretty looking drawings because uh, AutoCAD lets you whip these things out so fast. Uh, the issue I have, number one, is a little bit, is that uh, you know we were taught when we drew, uh, made a drawing, that uh, we use different leads for the uh, softer lead for the pro for the actual part, so it stood out. Then a, a, then a slightly finer lead for the dimensions, so the part really stood out. And the dimensions were a little bit finer than, of course, the dimensions itself. The lettering was a darker lead, too. Now, that those are small points. And you can change the line weights in AutoCAD if you want to take the time. So it brings me to my point. A few years ago, I was having a discussion with one of the owners of our shop, great guy. And I said, uh, I made the blanket statement that uh, AutoCAD makes designers lazy. And he said, no, it makes them more efficient. So I showed him a drawing I was working on. And the whole drawing was full of um, three place dimensions. I said, you and I both know that that hole is clearance for a quarter inch bolt. Why is it 0.250, right? It should be 930 seconds. He says, well, they were because the designer was lazy. Exactly. So I guess what I'm running into, uh, and what I try to do, and I've got one guy that I've trained very well. When he does a design, I've taught him to just, if, if it's just a drilled hole, just call it a 930 second drilled hole. Then I know it's a 930, if it's plus or minus five, right? I'm just gonna drill a hole. Once you put three to place dimensions on it, I'm assuming a, a bare minimum I'm reaming it. And if it's a really weird dimension, I might have to circle mill it, but I don't know that. So, and I go to the design office, is this what you really meant or is this what you really want, all right? I guess the reason for the video is I got a very simple little part to build the other day, which looked simple, seven trips back and forth and, figure this out with this, with this designer, a young guy, good guy, but nobody's I kind of watching him and saying, you know, what are you, what are you doing here? So a couple things, you know, I've always believed that a good designer is part designer, part engineer, and part storyteller. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know, your job kind of is uh, to be, to give me stuff that you don't want to see me again. And I know I forget stuff. They're going to forget stuff, but the more times I have to come in and see you, and ask questions, the, the, the worse you're doing, actually, right? So back in the day, and I'm going to show you an example here from some drawings from 1974, almost a half century old. I wish I could say they were half century old. How the designers took the time to um, highlight things for us, case in point. A couple weeks ago, I messed up a part because I did not see on this tiny, tiny section view uh, on an 8.5 by 11 sheet, which should have been at least double that size, I was going fast, which I usually do, and it was a blind hole, and I drilled it through. In the end, we were okay, but um, I missed it because everything was so small. It wouldn't have hurt to give me a bigger drawing. I'm old. Number two, uh, th to call that out with a note. Caution, note, blind hole, all right? Um, because the way the other views looked, it just was a very big assumption. It was a, it was a through hole. My mistake, I assumed, I get that. But there's things you can do as a draftsman, as a designer, uh, an engineer to make things, I hate to say easier, but clearer for us because um, we rely on your drawings to make the right part. And again, my biggest issue I'm having right now is the dimensioning. Um, what again, I teach these guys if they will, you know, if they're willing to listen, you know, don't try to dimension dowel pin holes. Just tell me, uh, drill and ream for half inch dowel pin, uh, half inch dowel pin PF, press fit. I know what to do. There's a reason they make reamers on size, one under and one over, okay? One over, slip fit, one under, press fit, on size, yeah, 
You might be able to push it through with your thumb, okay? Or even tap it a little bit. Or maybe push it through easily, but you get the point. One under, one over. I know what to do. Same with socket head cap screws, all right? Common clearance is a 30 second over on the body, on the head, and 30 second on the depth. Not, uh, you know, not a quarter inch socket head cap screw. It should, should say, what we used to do is drill and counter bore for quarter inch cap screw. Quarter inch S A S H C S socket head cap screw. We were trained to know what that meant. Now maybe some new guys aren't. I don't know how well they're training kids to know what a socket head cap screw is anymore. So you might have to put that on there and just to mention it correctly. They have charts, right? You know, the counter bore for a socket head cap screw, I believe for a quarter inch is 406 diameter, 280 deep, and the body clearance for a quarter inch socket head cap screw is 930 seconds, 0.28. So just little notes on the drawings make a huge difference on the shop floor. We don't want to waste time reaming holes and holding precision tolerances on holes. that are nothing but clearance for bolts or for drills to go through a fixture that we don't know. We just get, we don't know what the end product is. We just know what you gave us. And finally, please don't dimension holes or features from hole to hole to hole. Because every time I have to get my calculator out, that's an issue because I might plug in a wrong number. We'd prefer to work from machinists and tool makers from a corner or the center of the block and just dimension everything from that. Once we plug in the numbers or use your, your cam system, that's another issue, but um, you're gonna get your accurate locations if you're running a CNC machine, all right? So stop doing that. So finally, I'm gonna give you a little tour through this, uh, this, this nice old uh, drawing here from 1974. Uh, as you guys like stories, uh, I think it was 1981 or so, uh, Anson Tools and Gages, they were so well run, uh, we did not have a lot of overtime. They scheduled it and their work very well, okay, very military style there. And uh, it was very unusual to get overtime. And um, so uh, I used to work uh, living on eight hours a day, right? But we got invited one day, they bought the building next door. No, that day we were invited to come in and help them clear out the storage bin, the closet. And they had racks and racks and racks and racks of old drawings, time to throw them out. For some reason, I don't know why, I grabbed a couple folders full and I have them here. I'm so glad I did that. You know, um, once in a while people question uh, when I've got stuff on my website, you know, some tool making drawings and that, you know, how do they get these and how dare I charge for them. They are all of the dumpster unless I save them, okay? And it's not like I'm getting rich off of this, but I do take the time to try and save these things. And I did even call the company that eventually bought Anson's out. And then of course, and then it went out of business. They closed it. Did you save any of the old drawings or any of the old uh, apprentice tools drawings? They threw them all out, burned them all, threw it all out. Of course they did. So the stuff I've saved is, uh, I think quite valuable and they're good lessons. So let's take a quick peek at this drawing and I'll show you what I mean about giving your drawings and your designs a little bit of a personality, a little bit more clarity and uh, see what you think. All right, so let's take a look at this drawing. Uh, back in the day, uh, we used a lot of stamps. This one's kind of faded, it was green. Final drawing, okay. Engineering print, issued, shop order number. Uh, you know, I love, the, I love the stamps. I think that's so old school, right? I'm weird that way. Now, what do I mean by giving your drawings some personality? Well, you know, I just like the, the fact that this was all done by hand, okay? I love the fact that they took the time to really make the section views stand out. Just that, I'm sure that was a template that somebody bought. Lots of templates here. I still have a lot of them hanging here, okay? Look at this. Caution, okay? Shut off. Shut off, shut off, shut off, shut off. Caution, caution. Shut off, shut off. What's a shut off for you guys that aren't in the mold making world? Very simple. Shut off is when two pieces of steel meet, you get no plastic. That's how you get holes. That's a shut off, shut off, shut off, shut off, all that. If, if the two pieces of half of the mold meet, they can't have any plastic there. And then the way you get a hole. That's what a shut off is. Now, I love this one though. Note, what does standing steel mean? Very good, love that note. What that means is back in the day when we were doing this manually, or if you were doing it on a CNC, you come whip it along and you're gonna cut this angle, you're gonna whack that right off because that 
is this. And that, it looks like, uh, let's see here. That is standing on the side. That is what we call a bypass shutoff. We'll talk about this some other time. But they want to make sure that when you come through with your mill, watch it. This is standing up. It looks like that. Note. Caution. Does that make sense? I mean, it's really not that hard uh, to put these notes on there. And if I were you tomorrow, I'd run out and get yourself a note stamp and a caution stamp and tell your boss to send the bill to the tool and die guy where all invoices are traded with equal disdain. So that's it from here. Uh, just a quick recap. I hope uh, any designers out there don't be offended. Uh, I'm not angry about this at all. I wish we could just do a little bit better. Uh, give your drawings a little personality. Use those call outs, use personal notes. Make sure you do the best you can to make sure that stuff hits the production floor, the shop floor, the toolmaker, the machinist, that you've told a good story. That they, these guys take pride in the fact that they never have to come in and say, what did you mean? Did you really want this? Okay, so you'll get there. Uh, hopefully a video like this helps you. Again, I'm Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy. We'll see you on the next video.